In this chapter, we will continue to explore the subject of creating and importing media data. And to start with, I would like to talk about additional information concerning the importing of HDV or DV material. As you can see, I have changed my EDIUS layout somewhat for this chapter, and so our preview window is relatively large, enabling me to read all the menu items clearly. My BIM window, with its sub-windows, I have moved down to the bottom right here. For this chapter, I don't need the timeline to be too visible, so I've made that somewhat smaller, and we have, as mentioned, our preview window here. Now I would like to start to use an HDV camera as our playback device. And we have seen in our basic instruction tutorial that to allow us to use an HDV or DV camera connected via Firewire, we have to create this in our Devices section in the System Settings under Hardware, Device Preset. And there we have already created an HDV camera setting. It is also already selected on our Quick Selection field. And so I can access the camera directly by going to the Quick Selection field or also by using the F2 key as shown here. As mentioned earlier, I would like to show a few extra base functions for working with tape players. I will start by activating my camera as a player, and then here, under Capture, I choose HDV Camera. And now we are confronted with the Real Number dialog window. We didn't cover this in our basic tutorial, but we can now. This tape number is not required. However, I can, if I wish, deselect this user bit checkmark and give the tape a name. We will see the advantage of this later on. I will give it any name now, in this case, Polar, and confirm with OK. And now here, in Overlay, along with the name of my HDV camera, we also see the tape name Polar. I will now start the tape. I'll roll back a little. And so we learn our first new function that is pretty self-explanatory. There are transport buttons here. If I go to the stop mode first, I can also control the tape transport. However, without image, but much quicker. If, however, I use these buttons whilst playing or in pause mode, then the image is shown whilst the tape is being advanced or rewound, which is obviously more useful when searching for a specific section. I will now go back to play and explain this displayed item here right at the beginning. A timecode display is shown. I will pause and this current timecode shows me exactly where the tape is located. In addition to navigating via the scroll buttons, we also have the possibility to use this slider to navigate in our tape, and I'll show how this works now. If I click and hold this slider with the left mouse button, and move the slider from its centre position, and the more I move it from the centre position, the faster the playback rate will be, and this rate will be shown here. For the minute, I'm scrolling forwards at a rate of 1.1. To the right of the centre position will play back forwards, and to the left it will be played back in reverse. I will move the slider further to the right, and we will be playing back at double speed. And I can continue with the slider to the right, until we are playing back at a maximum of 20 times the standard rate. When I move the slider to the left, the same applies, but in this case in reverse playback. This is obviously a great function to find a certain point whilst the images are playing. If I let go of the mouse button, then the slider jumps back to the centre position automatically, and the player is put into pause mode. 